I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know.
let your spirit come and move within fill me once again cause I need more Jesus I'm desperate for you Jesus I'm hungry for you Jesus I'm longing He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. That's Psalm 43. Now we're going to change a little pace here. Let's read in the spirit some more. Man size. I can still see the steeple a little church on the hill There was a line at the altar And every pew had been filled I remember the water The choir singing old hymns and there was peace in the valley yeah. As the preacher man he said In the name of the Father The name of the Son The name of the Spirit You're washed by the blood Buried with Christ Raised in new life Baptized 
can still hear the sermon and all the people said amen it was a gift of salvation and you can be born again I remember the power the Holy Spirit rushing in and there was peace like the river when the preacher man he said in the name of the Father the name of the Son the name of the Spirit you're washed by the blood I'm buried with Christ raised in new life baptized all those old stained glass windows there's a story they tell on the memory is clear as the day I was there all those years I spent running you giving me back now I'm stepping in Oh, I'm stepping in Oh, I'm stepping in In the name of the Father The name of the Son The name of the Spirit You're washed by the blood I'm buried with Christ Raised in new life Baptized In the name of the Father the name of the Son, the name of the Spirit, you're washed by the blood, and buried with Christ, raised in new life, baptized. I can still see the steeple, a little church on the hill. We changed some things tonight, but there's other things we didn't change. And there was a certain song that I wanted to sing for specific reasons further into our conversation. I've said here before, my granddad died 10 years ago. The biggest mistake I made was not having the faith that he taught me from that loss. My granddad was a pastor for 28 years at the church I serve at. My uncle is the president of the California Baptist Foundation, so my roots are deep in this. The biggest mistake I made was self-pity on myself and didn't fully understand that my granddad was in a better place. He's where we're all trying to get. I spent two weeks every day with a bottle of Jack Daniels that's about this big and I drank myself unconscious on his gravestone asking why the why didn't matter because the meaning and everything that he taught me was still there I could still hear his voice to this day 10 years later telling me exactly what we're getting ready to sing about Zach Williams is the man that wrote this song and he best described it. There's a table, imagine a table, that can fit absolutely everybody. And there's a chair there with your name on it, whether you're sitting there or not. The chair is there. He makes it completely easy. We're the ones that make it hard for us to just go to that chair, and pull it out, and have a conversation. God is a free therapist that has the absolute answers to every question you could ever ask. And it is all in a Bible. And if that is the one thing that I can bring in this moment, is to tell you about the mistakes that I've made so you don't make the same ones. My wife doesn't even know that. That's something that I brought here. She's not here and hopefully not watching. Because she'll get mad if I didn't tell her. But in this situation, that's something that y'all need to remember. There's a table sitting there for every single one of us. And all we have to do is ask. I mean, it is literally that easy. There's no reason to make it complicated. The world makes it complicated. God does not. If 
we get these words, I'm going to go ahead and sing. And I want you guys to go ahead and sing with me because it's a really simple song. I hear the voice of love that's calling. And there's a chair that waits for you. And a friend who understands everything you're going through. But you keep standing at a distance. The shadow on your shame There's a light of hope that's shining Won't you come and take your place And bring it all to the table There's nothing he ain't seen before for all your sin, all your sorrow, and your sadness, there's a Savior and He calls, bring it all to the table. And He can see the weight you carry, and the fear that holds your heart. But through the cross you've been forgiven You're accepted as you are So bring it all to the table There's nothing he ain't seen before For all your trials and all your worries And your burdens there's a Savior and He calls, bring it all to the table, bring it Welcome back, Chelsea. You've been you've been doing some voice exercises. You've been just hammering it out there. Yeah, that's right. Welcome back, Brian. Woohoo! You know what's up? And I, I well, yeah. Welcome back. I'm not done. <laughs> I was a mechanic for a long time, and one of the toughest things. I, I've ever had to do was to try to tune up an inline six-cylinder engine. It's hard to tune them up to make them run good and smooth. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Alex has got this praise band tuned up pretty dang good, don't he? 
Thank you, guys. And Jason, thank you, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it, brother. And last but not least, Daniel. Right, Daniel! If you, if, if you smell fish, he just got back from a fishing trip here back. We have 54 fish, something like that. He's have a fish fry at Daniel's place. How's that? I've been uh, studying the benefits of generosity. Been reading a little bit about it. The uh, scientific consequences of generosity have been studied for uh, many years. On an individual level, a, a white paper put out by the John Templeton Foundation shows the benefits of practicing generosity are incredible. Scientists are discovering that generosity to be an ally of our health. Generosity is an ally to our health. From positive effects on mortality, how long we live, to a physical and emotional wellness. And on a relational level, generosity can be like connective tissue, connecting us with others through honest, loving engagement. Our communities, families, and individuals thrive when we give freely and abundantly. So these views are contrary. There's pastor the word contrary. I love that word. These views are contrary to many worldviews, but that study by the John Templeton Foundation reflects the ideas of its founder, a guy named John Templeton. He became very wealthy as a contrarian investor. Text a contrarian investor. That's somebody that invests what everybody else doesn't. If they say buy Boeing stock, he sells Boeing stock. He made a bunch of money doing that, but he wanted to support progress in religion and spiritual knowledge, especially at the intersection of religion and science. In other words, where does religion support science and vice versa? Say this big study. Papa God spelled it out ahead of time. Listen to what he says here in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 12. He said, each of you should give what you have decided to give in your heart, not reluctantly or un under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Those are all benefits that you're getting from your giving, your generosity. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And this service that you perform not only is not only supplying the needs of the Lord people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So now, do you think that science will ever be able to fully understand this creature that Papa God created? Will science ever figure out the complexities of these bodies, the medical mysteries of the mind? I'm kind of doubtful of that. Look at the confusion and the fear that this coronavirus has reaped. When someone like John Templeton is willing to mesh spiritual knowledge with science, though, we might just have a chance. Looks like he's onto something with regards to physical and emotional benefits of generosity. Based on his research, it appears that you can add years to your life as well as peace, joy, and contentment, contentment I'm sorry, with your generosity. What do you have to lose? Better yet, look what you have to gain. So think about that tonight as you give. Generosity begets generosity. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this ministry and uh, the generous givers. And there's more than a few. And because of our generous givers, you know, we're able to touch the lives that we touch. So I'm going to pray tonight for this offering, Lord, as we consider generosity in our giving. 
that you take this offering and multiply it. Grow it and grow it and grow it so we can reach more, touch more, and love more for you. And these things we pray in your holy, precious name, Father. Amen. Amen. See my name back there on that Woo! screen. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Some some of you I know it's back here too. Okay. <laughs> Many of you know who I am. Some of you may not, but uh, we're here because there's a couple of reasons I'm here. One is that I'm Lonnie's brother, and. <laughs> And I was the oldest, believe it or not, 
Uh, <laughs> it was kind of a joke he and I had together. But um, the other reason I was here, I was all, I'm also his pastor. And so being his pastor and mentor, we were tied together in association and through the denomination of Gospel Life Worship Center. And in that corporation, at one time, as I pastored in Grass Alley for 35 years, um, that church was the corporate church. That was the um, uh, actually the baby church at the time, growing into what it became. And then when uh, I retired as pastoring the local church, and just I just began to pastor the pastors that the Lord had placed with me. And during that time, as uh, Lonnie was also one of my pastors, what we did was, and I just want to bring you to speed, letting you know why it's so important that I, I, I show up here and that I'm here, is that Lonnie, as we, as we uh, move forward with the corporation, Lonnie became the pastor of the Gospel Life Worship Center Incorporated. That must be the Lord calling because he would he would call. <laughs> yeah, that must be, yeah. or it might have been Lonnie. You tell. <laughs> yeah, he got you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think Lonnie used to charge people for that. Yeah. Seventy five. Oh, it got up there. I remember when it was five dollars. <laughs> that's called inflation. Amen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was really inflated. But anyway, uh, Lonnie became the pastor of Gospel Life Worship Center Incorporated. So he was he was our pastor in the corporation. That was to keep everything because we we remain holding, and I'm the president of the corporation. My wife Donna's vice president, and we have a secretary of treasurer that's part of the corporation. And then we have a trustee that's part of the tr corporation that holds things together, and we do all the minutes and all of those kind of things that nobody wants to do. But we take care of all of those things. And so uh, I'm here, and I have to kind of explain to you what I'm doing here. So. It's, there's two full things that's happening. There's the, there's the corporate world, there's the business part, and then there's the spiritual part. And so I understand in the house is the same kind of thing. There's two, there's two corporations in operation. There's two business, and then there's the spiritual aspect. And Lonnie was a spiritual overseer over this house and over the way ministry and all of you that come here in fellowship, and he, he was the spiritual shepherd of this house. And so th this, is the, this is the key point. What he started several years ago, he didn't start it for it to quit. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so we're here to see that it continues, and it'll be a legacy unto Lonnie, my, my... My awesome brother, yes. and everybody loved Lonnie. I don't. I didn't meet a soul. And then Lonnie would come to me and say, "I want to get this one ordained and that one ordained." And so we ordained several people through the work that Lonnie was doing. So there's several people that are ordained ministers with us. That's been a part of Lonnie's life that he brought in. Now the only thing wrong with that was this. When I needed to know something about him, I would call him and ask him, and he wouldn't tell me anything bad. <laughs> and I'd say, Lonnie, they can't be all that perfect. <laughs> but he just, he never talked bad about people. And uh, he always talked how much he loved all of you. And he did. He, he loved you dearly. And his heart was overwhelmed with the love that uh, 
God had put in sight of him. And so he, he was tremendous. I think everyone that was there could be there. If you couldn't be, uh, I know you had reasons. Uh, Saturday when we did his uh, uh, celebration of life, and it's about life. I don't think about Lonnie being dead because he's not. Lonnie's alive. Lonnie has a new body. Amen. And uh, he, he's got a body that's... Come on. He thought he had a good one here. No. He's, <laughs> he's got a good one. When we were little, one of his favorite scriptures was in the Bible. It was the shortest verse that you could find in the Bible that made it his favorite. It was <laughs> Jesus wept. I believe on, on August the 2nd, Jesus wept. When Lonnie crossed over, but because he knew what was being left, and so I believe he did weep again, and uh, that touches me. <laughs> and I, and I, the only reason I would say that is because only the Lord could reveal such a thing as that. It's amazing the things the Lord has brought back to my memory, little things. Little things that just uh, our ministries were so tied together. We were we were tied together. We were shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip, and and uh, many things that our church did. Uh, the way I joined in, we did a lot of campouts. We did a lot of other kinds of meetings and uh, things that we celebrated the goodness of God, the people of God that loved God, the people that were being reached. And uh, and he was one that, you know, he was going after everybody. He didn't have to be a suitor no. for Lonnie to go after her. Right. And if it was, if you were down in the ditch, he's the one that he's going to be going down there, and he's going to be getting in the ditch and pushing you out because that's that's Lonnie, and that's what he was, and and uh, you know that because he's touched your life in such a special way, and he's touched all of us in that way. So being here, uh, we're, we're, at a, we're at a place, it's a real crossroads for me, because this was supposed to be Lonnie taking my place in, in ministry and the full corporation, becoming the president of it, and, and him running it. Uh, we talked about that. This part we did not talk about. This was unforeseen and was not expected. And uh, to all of my surprise, uh, and it happened so quickly, uh, the, the only thing I know is that he embraced what was ahead for him. What part that he has, we know the kingdom of God. Lonnie taught it like no other, and he taught it to you. And I heard it Saturday of many of you that got up. I was hearing kingdom from you. And it's sad to, to, to note today that many churches, they never mention the kingdom. I don't know why, because when John showed up, the Baptist, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. And you know, Lonnie had the John the Baptist anointing on him. And the kingdom of God is not only at hand, it's within us now. Amen. And it's living in us. And he's part of that. We're part of that. And so this is a massive thing that God, God is doing. Just because we can't see into that which is unseen. Uh, but God does give us glimpses of it. That's what revelation is about. That's what, the, that's what revelation knowledge is about. That's why God will just drop something into your spirit and into your heart and reveal it to you. That's what He's doing. He's giving you kingdom insight. He's giving you little portions and a little bit of touch of what he's all about. And I don't know about you, every, re every revelation that God has ever given me, I, I haven't forgot it. It just, it, it's, it's burned into my spirit. It's burned into my life. And so when God began to open the understanding that the kingdom of God is present today, I was raised where we were taught that the kingdom of God was coming somewhere in our far future. And after everything blows all the hell and everything happens, and then the Lord's going to come down and, and set up His kingdom and make everything right and perfect. 
And that's not the way it is. That's, what, that's not what the scripture teaches. That's what theory teaches. That's what people have taken some scriptures out of context and taught. And so, and I know Lonnie taught you out of the scripture. He taught you the truth. He taught you the word of God. And it's beyond just taking one scripture. He, he gave you the word of God. And he reveals unto you what the kingdom of God is about. In the kingdom of God, you know what's amazing about it? It doesn't look at, it doesn't look at people, what their standing is in life. It doesn't look at people what color they are. What, whatever they are. The kingdom of God is like a net that's thrown out and it brings in everybody. It brings in everybody. Amen. It doesn't leave anybody out. And, and so, uh, that, that's, <laughs> That's what God is revealing today. And that's what He's revealing under the church. And He's wanting that message to go out. And, and, and you know, when you begin to hear that, you, you grasp a love. You understand a love and a passion that comes from Jesus like never before. He becomes reality to you. And it, why? Because He's the King of that kingdom. And I know where the King sits. I know where He sits. Amen. He sits right in here. He sits right in here. Amen. And, and, and he's a king of the kingdom. So he, he's right on his throne. And, and the good thing was, when he moved in, the old koi moved out. The old nature, the old man, the, that old guy, he had to go. He had to leave. And so how he left was, Jesus told us in Romans. Romans is the sixth book of the New Testament. Everybody say six. six. In the sixth chapter, everybody say six. six. Come on. In the sixth verse. Come on, six. Six, six, six. You know what it says? We are crucified. That's right. My old man is crucified on, with Christ. Woo! My old nature. My old nature is dead. I've got a new nature now. <laughs> it's one that's come from heaven. That's right. It's one that lives within me. It's one that's quick and alive and powerful. That's why Jesus said, hey, those that believe on me shall never die. Because what he did, he brought into us life in this physical body that we have that is subject to certain things. It is bound by the earthly situation. But you know what he said? I'm prepared a new body for you. <laughs> I've got a new house for you. One that's not going to be and it is fashioned like his. You know, Jesus was resurrected from the old body. But you know what? He was showing us a new body because he could walk in the room without opening the door. You try that. You try that in this body. i tell you why. You're not going to get very far. You're going to have to turn the doorknob. Thank God somebody invented doorknobs. But you're going to have to open the door. But... God's given us a new body, but He's given us a new life right now. And it's not something that we have to wait for. That's right. It's not something we have to wait for. It's something we grab right now. Right. It's right now. I have some scriptures. Let me, let me just read a scripture and then I'm not going to hold you too long at all. It won't take more than five minutes. If a few people give me five minutes. Amen. Well, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40. There we go. <laughs> Amen. But I feel the life of God in here. I, I, I feel the presence of God. I, I feel God doing something right now. I feel God touching a life. I, I feel the Holy Spirit doing a work in a heart right now because I know what the words of life will do. It's powerful. Well, we're going to read that too. And in, in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 9, it says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There, it says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Well, if we had, run the, if we had read the preceding verses, we'll find out that Joshua led them into the land of Canaan. But he didn't, he didn't give them the full rest. He didn't give them the rest. There was still yet... A rest that remaineth. So there's a rest you and I can enter into today. 
There's a peace in God. There's a place in God. There's a rest in God that's beyond your thinking and your ability. And I, would, I was talking to Dennis. Good to see you, Dennis. I was talking to Dennis today. We had breakfast this morning. And, and, and I was sharing some things with him about that. And, and it's, it's, a, it's amazing how the rest of God, how, how the peace of God is, is so overwhelming. But there therefore remaineth to the people of God. We don't have to stay in the, in the situation that we're in. And one of the things that hurts me, I, we've been visiting other churches and ministries and seeing what's out there. You know what hurts me? That every Sunday at the altar service, the same people are coming forward for the same hurts. For the same hurts. Every week, it's like you can count on it. When the pastor gives the call, the same people that means that they're not they're not receiving something that belongs to them today. It's either a breakdown on their receiving or a breakdown in the in the one giving it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not here to accuse anybody. All I know is what I see. I I remember in services when you walked out of that service, the power of God radiating from your life. That things changed. I mean, you walked out of there with a peace that's beyond your understanding. That God touched your life literally, and it lasted more than a week. I mean, it lasted. When God touched me as a little guy, it lasted my life. It's still there. And so, from the from the point of of one Sunday to the next, and people are not changing something. There's a breakdown somewhere. There's a breakdown in their Ability to receive or not hearing and not receiving or hearing the right things. The Word of God. <laughs> the, yeah, it should have been on Friday night service. <laughs> the Word of God is what makes the difference. Amen. The Word of God will change people's lives. I didn't change my life overnight, but the Word of God changed it. I got a new man, Christ Jesus. I became a new man at new birth. The old man left. He couldn't stick around. He had to leave. And so my mind had to be renewed. So I, what did I do? I renewed it day by day. Day by day, I renewed it by the Word of God. And so therefore, he says in verse 10, For, for he that is entered into his rest, he hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Man, that is such a powerful verse. I guess you can see it up there. If you have entered into that rest, you cease from your own works. Right. How many knows you can work yourself to heaven? No. <laughs> Good. No one raised their hand. Praise the Lord. I wasn't trying to embarrass anybody. Nobody got embarrassed. Glory to God. <laughs> but you cannot get there on your own works. You get there by what Jesus did. Right. See, with Jesus, it's a great big done. Amen. Finished. That's why he said it's finished. And so we cease from our works as God did it from His. And, and it's amazing how God, oh, He did it. If we were still under the law, we would have a problem. We'd still be trying to attain to get to God. And we, we, were, out, we, were, out without a, we were out without a cause anyway because we weren't even part of the family of God. We were Gentiles. We were... We were foreigners. We were heathens. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, because they rejected Him, His own, rejected Him, He said, wait a minute, I'm going to take that kingdom from you and I'm going to give it to some more people. Come on. I'm going to give it to some that's going to appreciate it. And I think the church better wake up and start appreciating the kingdom of God on, that He's given us and brought to us. He said, let us therefore labor to enter into the rest. If you're going to labor for anything, labor to get into that rest. In other words, get in the Word of God. Get in the Word of God. When I find people, when they get more of the Word, the hungry, the hungrier they get for it. The more they want. Have you ever had a good dinner? Oh, and, you, and, and your stomach just can't hardly take it, but your mouth wants more? Yeah. <laughs> That's the Word of God. I mean... 
That's truth. That's what truth does. And verse 12, for, for the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. The word, that's what the Word of God does. Why does it discern the thought and intent of your heart? Because He wants to change you. He wants to develop you. He's not there to... The Word of God doesn't con, come to condemn you. Jesus said there's no condemnation of the Word. He declares us, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. You know why there's no condemnation? You know What happens when they condemn a house? Some of the houses that are burned. And maybe they're not burned all the way. They'll walk in and they'll put a big sign and they'll say condemned. You know what it means? Nobody can live there. No habitation. If there's no, if there's no condemnation, you can be inhabited. If, it's, if you're not condemned, then Jesus can live in you. But if He condemns you, He can't move in. And so He will not condemn you. He come to liberate us. He come to set us free. Now some people run off the deep end with some things. That's normal. People just do that. It's like the pendulum swings, like the pendulums do. You know, you get some that will swing way out there so far that you wonder where in the world. They're out in twilight zone now. <laughs> That's not, you, you got to have the Word of God. It balances it brings in a flow of, of right. And it doesn't, it doesn't just say, okay, by the grace of God, then I can do anything I want. That's not what it says. The Bible says the grace will teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Who's it teaching? That mind. It denies ungodliness and worldly lust and it lives righteously and godly. Where? In this present world. You know, it's not about when you get to heaven. It's it's about here, heaven coming into you. Come on. It's not about us leaving here and going. It's about Him coming to us. That's right. And it's still coming to us. And it's still coming to us. And according to the Word of God, there's a day that, that Jesus will. There's, there's so many returns of Jesus. When you invite Him into your heart, He returned. And He came into your life. Come on. He returned to Paul when he met him on the road to Damascus. His name was Saul. And he said, why are you persecuting the church? That's a return. There's returns all the time. Jesus appearing to people. Not long ago, I was talking to an Iranian man. He was in Iran. Couldn't get out at the time. He was trying to get his family out of there and all kinds of stuff going on. And he's trying to get out. And lo and behold, he's on the road one day. And the Lord walked right up to him, and it was Jesus. And you know what he did? He didn't say, "Who are you?" He knew. Come on. Yeah. He wasn't a believer. He wasn't a believer. He didn't say, "Who are you?" He knew he was Jesus. I met him right, right over here, right over here in one of the stores, and I was talking to him about. It. He said he just come up and told me who he was, and and said. This is what I've done for you. And this is what I'm going to do for you. And, and, and he won his whole family. And now you're talking about family. You're talking about some massive group of people. <laughs> and now a lot of them live right here in Sacramento, California. And they're born again believers because Jesus made an appearance. Jesus came. Amen. And he's still doing that. And he's still doing that. And one day he said he'll, he's going to come with his saints. Yeah. The saints are going to rule the nations. And so we're saints. Amen. Those that have gone before us are saints. So th whatever his plan is, that's okay with me if he comes and wants to join with us any time. And bring him on, bring him on, bring him on. <laughs> Amen. But the key right now is he's concerned about where you are and where you live and what's going on in your life right now. And that he wants you to walk in happiness. Amen. He wants you to walk in joy, because in the Holy Spirit, in the kingdom of God, there is joy and there is peace and there is righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's there. 
It is, it's there. And, and I, and I declare that the church is going to come to a place again, recognizing that the upper room hasn't disappeared. The upper room hasn't disappeared, but we as a body can walk in that upper room and, and, and wait on the Lord <laughs> until he fills us and adduces us with power from on high. You know what the 120 did when they left the upper room? They went out and preached. Come on. All 120 of them. We read about Peter, what he said. But all of them were preaching. And you know what they were preaching? I think there was like four, three or four different dialects there. People speak different language. You know what they did? They preached to them in their language. Not knowing their language. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They just began to te teach the people in their dialect. If you'd have been there that day, and you spoke English, somebody would have walked out of that upper room and they would have preached to you the gospel in English. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor friend of mine was a missionary. He went over to, uh, he was over in another country and they spoke a different language there. And so he, he was trying to learn some language, but he had an interpreter. And so the interpreter was interpreting and then he said, those of you who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, would you please come down? And so several of them come down and they laid hands on them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. He said to my, my shock, many of them were praying praises unto God in English. Never spoke English in their life, but they were praising God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In English. Never spoke English, but their dialect became an English language. And so the Holy Spirit is awesome. He can, he can be in us. God hadn't changed. Holy Spirit hadn't changed. His desire, His plan hadn't changed. And the plan He has for you, it is awesome. It is wonderful. And He wants you to walk in that peace and have that peace. And I can feel the peace of God right now touching your life. Amen. Amen. God is good. Let me... Let me do this one thing, and then we will we will close. If if you're here tonight and you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, and you say tonight, I want him, I want him to move in. I want him to come into my life. Are we all believers? Is there one? And if there is, just stand to your feet. Step out in the aisle. Walk right down here. We're, we're not ashamed of Him. We don't hide. What, what, what we're offering is better than anything you could ever find. So if you've never accepted Him, I give you that invitation tonight. Amen. I take it everybody's believers. So we have some more work to do. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So we're, we're going to get people in. Amen. Amen. I mean, we want to we want to make them believers in Jesus. Amen. Tonight, if you need a touch from God, and I'm sure many do, and I know there's things. A lot of us have family members that are going through situation. There's all kinds of things. A lot of needs tonight. What I want you to do tonight, I'm going to pray over you. I just want you to put your hands out. You have a need and you have a request. Just put your hands out. And I say to do this because you're going to receive. Amen. We just open up our hands. Open up our heart. Father, we just declare tonight, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love that you have for us. I thank you for every individual in this place tonight. I thank you for... Those that are in the house, Father, that has needs within their life, we declare those needs met. For they have family members that need you, we declare for their salvation. You have promised, Father, to give us our house and our household, that we, they would believe you and believe on you. And Father, we agree with you tonight in your word. 
And I just release your anointing right now to fall in the house and upon every person. And every person tonight leaves here with the joy and the peace of God. Holy Spirit, be their guide, be their teacher, be their helper. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you.